In this lecture, I'm going to show you how we can make use of the principle of mathematical induction to define various quantities associated with the natural numbers. We'll talk about how one defines the factorial function inductively and how one defines summations and products inductively. So let's first talk about the function n factorial. The way you're used to seeing this thing defined, you usually write it in this way, this sort of a vague statement. n factorial is the product of all of the natural numbers from 1 up to n. The correct way to define it is to define it inductively by these two statements. We define 1 factorial to be 1, and then we say for any natural number n, we define n plus 1 factorial in terms of the one that we've just previously defined. We define it to be n plus 1 times n factorial. So the claim is that we, if we do it in this way, then the factorial function is actually defined for all n by these two properties. And uh, let's see if we can write a proof of that fact, making use of the principle of mathematical induction. So here's a proof. We let s be defined to be the set of all natural numbers such that n factorial is defined, and our intention is to show that s is equal to all of n. So we're going to make use of the principle of mathematical induction in order to do it. So remember the format that I introduced in the last lecture. We have a basis step in which we have to verify that 1 is an element of s. So since we've defined 1 factorial to be 1, from here, that means that 1 is an element of s because 1 factorial is defined. Now we have the inductive step in which we give ourselves an, um, a generic n and we assume that n is an element of s, in other words, n factorial is defined, and we have to deduce from that that n plus 1 factorial is defined, and that follows from here n factorial is equal to n plus 1 times n factorial. Since we're assuming that n factorial is defined, that means that n plus 1 factorial is defined. In other words, n plus 1 is an element of s. So we have the right to say, by the principle of mathematical induction, that s is all of the natural numbers. And so this is the technique for deducing that just simply by writing down these two things, one has defined the factorial function on the set of all natural numbers. Let's now look at another example. Um, let's talk about summation notation that you study in your calculus classes. If we give ourselves an infinite sequence of numbers, we want to talk about what we mean by the partial sums of that sequence of natural numbers. And we do that by making use of this summation notation. Namely, we define the summation of a sub k as k runs from 1 to n to be the sum of the first n terms of that uh, sequence of, of, of real numbers. But the more correct way to define it for all natural numbers n is to use principle of mathematical induction. We define the summation of a sub k as k runs from 1 to 1 to be a sub 1. And then we define the summation of a sub k from k from 1 to n plus 1 to be the same sum from 1 to n plus the very last term a sub n plus 1. So this is what we call the inductive way of defining summation notation. And what we'll do next is write a proof that the summation of a sub k, k from 1 to n, is defined for every natural number n by these two properties, 1 and 2. So here's the proof using the principle of mathematical induction. We let s be the set of all natural numbers such that the sum of a sub k as k runs from 1 to n is defined will be done if we prove that s is equal to all of the natural numbers. So we do this using the principle of mathematical induction. We start with the basis step, which says that 
the summation of a sub k as k runs from 1 to 1 is a sub 1. This was our definition on the previous slide, and that proves that 1 is an element of s. Next we have the inductive step. If we give ourselves a generic n in the natural numbers, and we assume that n is an element of s, that means that this quantity here is defined, and we've defined this quantity by means of this equality. So since this is defined and this is defined, and we know how to add two numbers together, this is also defined as a certain real number, and therefore n plus 1 is an element of s. And so it follows by the principle of mathematical induction that s is all of n, and it, in other words, the summation of the a sub k, k from 1 to n, is defined for all natural numbers n. And finally, I'll show you one last application of this technique, and it is to make use of the product notation. This is something you may or may not have seen, but just as one can talk about partial sums of an infinite sequence of real numbers, one can also talk about partial products. So informally, the partial product of a sub k, as k runs from 1 to n, is defined to be the product of the first n of them. But the more correct inductive way of defining um, the partial product is by defining the partial product a sub k, k from 1 to 1, to be just simply the first term, and then if we define the partial product from 1 up to n plus 1 to be the partial product from 1 to n and multiply by the very last term, the n plus 1th term. So that is the inductive way of defining this notation pi. And it's an exercise for you to prove that this product is defined for all natural numbers by making use of the principle of mathematical induction. The proof is very much like the uh, previous proof that I did for um, summation notation, and so I'll leave that for you as an exercise to do.